I'm a PhD student at the University of Manchester um, looking at the management impact on the social behaviour of pseudoasy crested macaques. Pseudoasy crested macaques are critically endangered in the wild. There are estimates that there are only around 400 left on the island of Pseudoasy. And due to habitat fragmentation and destruction, um, they're becoming increasingly endangered. Um, they're also a delicacy in Pseudoasy, so villagers eat them for Christmas, so that's also affecting their numbers. These animals are actually really important insurance populations, just in case something happens to the in situ population. And in terms of my project, it's important that we understand how management affects their social behaviour, their physiology, just make, means that we can improve our best practices as well and really standardise that care across collections so that they're getting the best care that's available to them. I looked firstly at social network analysis, so that is looking at how um, individuals interact with one another. So I focus primarily on grooming behaviour which is a really important behaviour in primates. It is a social behaviour, so it reinforces social relationships, ameliorates stress, um, they use it sometimes to reconcile after conflict as well. And then also at proximity, so just how close were they to one another, how were they um, behaving and where were they within the enclosure. And then the second thing that I looked at um, was looking at um, monitoring their stress hormones. So this is through their faecal samples because it's non-invasive which means that we're not disturbing the animals when we're collecting uh, samples. This was then returned to our lab here at Chester Zoo where we um, just looked for different concentrations over the different time periods. So we looked to see at how much hormone was in each sample and then grouped it together as well. So it's a really easy way to see how these animals are responding internally. So one of the key things for zoos when they're monitoring their animals is ensuring that the methods are really practical and easy to use so that it doesn't take up a ton of time but you actually get a lot of really important information out of it. So basically we just picked up 10 random faecal samples every collection day and monitored those uh, hormone concentrations and what my results showed is that you actually get these really clear, concise, group-wide shifts in hormones. Same with activity budgets, it was just monitoring them. Monitoring each macaque for 10 minutes um, once a week gave us this ton of information on how they responded to these moves. We now have a partnership between the University of Manchester and Chester Zoo and my project was actually one that um, was designed by the curators and the keepers. It's something that the teams wanted so a lot of the projects and PhDs are actually useful science as well. It's something that you know will have an impact on the animals in our care. I've had so much support from everyone from actually advising me on the best methods, how to collect the data. The keepers sat down with me for hours to help me distinguish which macaque is which. Um, they really helped me understand a lot more of the subtle behaviours as well. Uh, keepers have collected all of the faecal samples that I used as well. And then um, from the lab, it's been absolutely amazing. They've sat down with me, run my samples three, four times. It's been support through like writing, um, papers, through workshops. It's been really, really useful and I'd highly recommend it. We have such a huge collection of different animals and the support that you get both from the teams and um, externally are really great.